guys welcome back to SMB designs today we're continuing in our uh, book of ideas this one is not in my book yet but I was watching a video uh, by a lady and I will put her link and everything in the description box but she was making this one sheet wonder and it turned out so cute I thought we have to add it to our book so what you'll need to start with is one 12 by 12 sheet of paper and mine is printed on one side and blank on the other so I turn the blank side up you'll want to use your scoreboard and you're going to score at the number three the number six oh, I jumped my line there don't jump your line. There, the number six and the number nine. Okay, we're going to rotate it one time and do the same thing three, six, and nine. Okay, once we've got that part done, our scoring is done. Come on, open up. There we go. So you want to take your paper off and put your scoreboard aside. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is, I'm going to draw this on here because I think it would be easier for you to see. We are going to basically cut the letter M. You're going to cut straight from the bottom up to the bottom of the top one. Okay, so your line would be on your uh, crease and you're going to cut there then you're going to skip over to the one on the other side now if your paper is directional your printed paper you want to make sure that your print is on the top side okay so we're going to do our line just like we did on the other side then we're going to rotate it all the way around and we're going to do the same thing, but this time from this direction up to the bottom of that top one. These are so cute. I can't wait for you guys to see this. It's going to be so fun. Okay, so you're going to cut on your lines. Cut on your crease that you made. I just cut, just drew the line for you, but... Your crease is the accurate part. Now this one, this paper that I'm using is actually a thinner piece of paper. It's more like uh, a little bit heavier than paper weight, but that's, I believe is gonna be good because when I watched her do it, she was using a thicker cardstock and it was, it made a really chunky piece in the end. Am I doing this right? Oh yes, I'm still cutting. Okay. I lost my place. I thought I already did this. I did, just not with y'all. I'm running a little bit behind this week on most every video that I do, but I hope you can forgive me. It's been a, a crazy week. Health-wise, especially. I've been fighting a migraine so much in the middle one you're doing all the way up to your dot your bottom of that up so now you have what is like the shape of a letter M if you turn it off you can see the letter M so from our back side you want to fold the first one up on the crease like that you're going to tuck it under and fold on the crease again, but backwards like that. You're going to continue doing that, going around the whole thing as if you were going in a big circle or something. You're just going to continue following the path. I guess it would be more like a maze, right? Just follow the path. There we go. And... Keep on going. Let's 
you know, make sure that your lines, that you're staying squared up. Because if you don't, you'll be off in the end, and you don't want that. So then I'm going to flip that one over. I'm sure most people do this with stuff laying down, but I'm a little weird like that, I guess. I just like to see it and have it up close. Okay. So now we're going to fold it this way again. If you're using a thicker paper, definitely use your bone folder on every crease. Because this is thinner, I'm just using it ever so often. I could even wait and do it at the end because it is thinner. We're getting there, guys. We are getting there. This is such a cute idea. I'm so, so excited about it. hold that up so I can see that crease. Sometimes it just helps to see it from the top. And when you're under a camera, you kind of have a hard time doing that. All right, our last fold here. Make sure it's even. Okay, so we need to flip it to where the folds, you'll see most of the folds out to the front. So basically you want it to look like this. You're going to have no, nope. upside down. There we go. You're going to have this peak in the middle, okay? So when you start this, keep your book down. The first is the cover, and this second one, as you'll see, is a fold on the side. So that means we're going to have a, a pocket at the top. So to make a pocket at the top, we're going to need to, you know, I'm just going to use some tape instead of glue. I just think I would like that better. <laughs> some double-sided tape. Uh, if you have some thinner, that would be better, but this is as thin as I have currently. So get it as close as you can to the edge, but not over it. And tear it off. Okay. Then Kind of just put your thumb down through it and it'll pull right off. Do the same thing for the other side. I think it is scrapbooking with me. Um, her daughter, Melena Plylant, and her have a store and they carry a really thin one. I haven't gotten it yet, but I think I might need it. If your nails are not working good for you, just use some tweezers or a, um, put it back where you're supposed to be now, because I'll get it backwards. Okay, we're supposed to take this side to this, so put it there, and then just burnish it with your fingers just to make sure it goes down. Um, and so put our book back together like it's supposed to be. Our opening is back here, so... I'm sorry, we have an opening here. So we need to put tape here and here, okay? Yes, here and here. It's easy to get those messed up, so just try your best to keep your book together because we are making a little book, of course. I don't know if I've told you all that yet, but that's what we're making. And then you've got this side. Pull my papers off after running my fingernail down it. I know you're probably screaming at me in the in the screen trying to tell me, don't do it that way. <laughs> I can hear Marty now. There we go. Okay, so keep our front of our book in the front oh, and close it back. 
Now we're at here. We have our front cover, a pocket here, and, uh oh, did I, see? I did that one closed. I sure did, I taped it on the wrong side, didn't I? That's okay. I just won't have a pocket on that one. That's fine. So, this one, I want it to be a pocket like this. So, I have a top opening. I'm going to go down this side and this side on the inside. goodness me and this thing goes like that normally so I want my tape did I skip I skipped one completely no I've got it backwards that's what the problem is I had it right I just had it backwards okay don't get confused by me we're gonna put it on this bottom part here as we're making that pocket, I can edit out my boo boos if y'all want me to, but um, I personally really like to see people's boo boos just because I know then that I'm not the only one that messes everything up the first time or two, you know. Okay, Got our tape. standing upright. So those two go together. Got a little bit of tape there trying to stick out on the end. Let me get that off there. Make sure you get that off your scissors. Okay. So Did I put tape on the inside? That makes no sense. I did that stupidly. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit of glue and help it out. And just do a little bit of glue down this side. It's still okay. Okay, we still will have a pocket right there. It's just gonna be a little bit narrower because I put the Stuff on the inside. Y'all don't do what I do. Do what I say. Well, only sometimes. Okay, so this is our front. We need to glue this one and this one. I'll take this one and this one. That really thin double-sided tape would be absolutely perfect for this. Now that I have fiddled and fiddled with that, let's put this back before I tape it shut. Yes, a top pocket right there. Okay. Oh, got it too 
Not on the right spot. Don't do it. There we go. Okay. So we have a top there. A top there because I did it wrong. It should be a side. And now our next thing is going to be a top. So we're going to have to go down here and here. Get it back up like it's supposed to be. Lock it there on the top. And this one right here is going to be a side, so we need to go across and that way. I have no nails anymore. That's why I keep trying because I know I had nails and it, they worked before I messed them up because I liked filing and I got too happy with it. There we go. Alright, that's a top pocket. This one, hold up, didn't we just make a, oh yeah, side pocket, top pocket, side pocket. So we need to go here to here. You know what? It might be better if I just draw myself a little line where I think I need the tape at every time. Back at it. Yes, that's going to be a side pocket. So we'll tape that shut nicely. Now we're going to do a top pocket again. So we need to go down one side and down the other. Am I doing this on every one of them? I wonder. That's a good question. I'll have to go back and look.
Okay. All right, so now we're right here. And we just made that open pocket, and that is our back. Whew. Okay. So, that's what it'll look like. All right, so on this one that I did, I'm going to go through and mark lines so you can see actually where to glue. So this is our first page. And our first one is gonna be a top loading. So we want to glue on the other side, down and over, okay? Down and over like that. This one is going to be a side load, so you're going to do down both sides, just like that. Then it's going to be another top load, so you want to do like that and like that on the other side, okay? Then you're going to be a side load, so you're going to do the straight line on each side again. Okay, then here you're going to be a top load, so you want to do here and here. Mm, no, wrong, not there, here and here. It always makes me think it's wrong when it's close to the base of it, but that's not wrong. Okay. So then we're going to go over here, and this one's a side pocket. Yes. So it's going to be, again, the two lines down the two top and bottom. Then we're going to be a top pocket. So we're going to do here and here. You're going to glue in an L on this one. Then the last one is your cover, okay? So... Now that we got to that part, I'm sorry if I confused anyone. I hope going back through that helped to kind of see where you should actually, where what you're actually at. Okay, this is our little book, okay? It's just a little book. So now we need to um, work on putting some decorative paper on the inside. Technically, at this point, you can do anything at all that you want to with it. Um, you can make it a journal, you can make it just a little writing book, anything at all. I'm looking through some of my scraps to see if I have any that are the size I need. I have a few there that'll work. And maybe one out of that one. Okay, so what we're going to need, let me see where, to, there's my ruler, is a three by three I believe not quite you're going to need um, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths you want it to be equal all the way around okay so we'll cut all of these in two and seven eighths inch increments my silly keyboard is in the way. Let me see if I can just move that and it will let you see. Yeah. Okay. So we want to clean up our edge first of all. So I'm going to line it up on the dotted line. I'm going to put it right there because that's where the edge is and you see there's a little bit more to come off. So I'm going to put the edge right on that and let it just slice that little bit off so that's even and this is too tall but we're going to go ahead and cut the um, two and seven eighths on this side first and I always use this ruler I can't read those other little dots without them and I was almost there right there will be our cutting spot okay so when you flip it once and make it two and seven eighths again. It was close, wasn't it? 
Yeah, that's close. Okay, there's one. Let's check our first one and make sure it's going to fit in there. And it does. Gives very little around it, though. And I really would like to see the craft paper. I like that. So let's shrink it down to... Uh, instead of two and seven eighths, let's go two and a, um, I don't want it that far. Two and three quarters, and see what that does. All right, two and three quarters should be right there on this little mat. And two and three quarters should be here. Okay, that, hmm, that will work, um, so two and three quarters, yeah, that's fine, two and three quarters is going to be just right, and how many do we need, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We need 14, 15, 16, because we need them for the front and the back. You'll see why. We need 16 of those squares. So I'm going to go and cut those, and I'll be right back. Okay. So I got all of my pretty shiny pieces cut out. I did go ahead and round the corners. I do like that look. And I use the medium on my corner rounder. This is a Kotomaru Pro. Hopefully you can see that. It's really handy. And while I was at it, I cut those at, let me make sure I get you the right sizing, at three and three fourths squared. I went ahead and I cut some um, coffee dyed paper and I cut it at uh, two and five eighths square. I have not rounded those yet. I'm going to go ahead and round those real quick. Um, I can round a couple at a time with it being the thinner paper. So you don't have to round unless you just want to. I like it. I like how it looks when I put the rounded corners into another rounded corner. So that's just me. It's just a personal preference. Okay. One more in this color line. So shade. So I'll go ahead and do it by itself. I have different shades of the papers. So I just kept them in separate order so that I could alternate and didn't have all of one the wrong way. Mm, this looks like these are different sizes. Let me check this one. It should not be. This one is too small. That one's no good. For this project anyway. I'm glad it was that one and not all these. Right? Okay, just be sure you keep them all lined up if you're going to do more than one so they don't get all wonky. Yeah, I was afraid that one's going to give me a little trouble. It's got a little corner edge that is flipped up, so I'm going to flip it over so it doesn't get caught on the mechanism in there, and that worked perfect. Now to do our light colored stack. I Some of these are pages that I coffee dyed myself and some are pages that I got a set from Amazon for. I may have that pull. And, um, but they're, they're really handy, especially if you don't have time to coffee dye and you don't want to mess with it. It's really some nice papers in it. So I'm, I'm pleased with that purchase. 
Uh, I've got too many, I guess. I thought it was the same as what I'd been doing, but okay. It's just going to be picky about it. Okay. We're almost there, guys. Almost there, and we can start back on our little book. And another one of those little corners. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and glue these to the center of this. So I'm not trying to center every single thing as I go, but I want to pick out my order of how I want these. So those two are good for that one. And then I'm going to do something else here. Uh, but one of those. Okay. Um, actually, let's swap it out for this one. That'll look better. I'll do this one and one of these. And I really like this dot one. And we'll do it with one of these. We'll do it on this side this time there. And then we will do this one and... Did I do the last one? Y'all don't forget like I do. I forget everything. Okay, I did those two so I can do this one here. And then here, we're going to need two more. So we'll do this one here. And mm, yeah, I, think, I think I'll do... No, I'm going to do this one. <laughs> This is the fun part where you just get to decide what you want, where, and go with it. Yeah, I love that. Okay. That is fine as long as I didn't... Oh, I did put the same one there. So I need to change that out. I'll go with this one. No, it's too many of the same shapes. There we go. Okay. So now that I have those picked out, I will use a front and a back as well. So, my back will be a solid. Since this one has a bend, I'm going to omit it. And I will put this one will be on the back here. And this one will be on the front. So, I'm going to set those aside because I've got to do something else before I can use those. So, let's get our glue stick out. Our first one, we're going to put a darker one on. No, we're going to put this one on. <laughs> I need to get myself a sheet of paper to glue on so I don't get it all over everything. There we go. Be sure you get all your edges real good and then line it up so that it's even in the middle as you can. It's not going to be perfect. Nothing ever is, but with glue stick you have a minute or two to kind of move things around. So that will be my first one so I can go ahead and glue it in. Well, those slid right out. So I'm going to put that here. And just eyeballing it. You don't have to measure. Eyeballing is always good in my book. Okay. So now we've got this one. These two were in our back. I want to mix those up. I'm going to do a darker one, I think, since we just did a really nice light one. And I think it'll go good with this backing. So, oh, which side do I want? I want that side up. So, this is one of those Amazon papers, if you were wondering. Uh, 
Okay. Got it a little bit off. Let me shiz it around. Okay, that's fine. Flip it over. You're going to continue doing this until you get all of those glued into the book, but do not glue the cover and the back. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'm back, and I have gone through and done that to every page in the book. And uh, if you want to cut holes for your pockets, now is the time to do that. And I think I do. I don't know. It would cut into my pretty... Well, I'm going to just so we can know where, which pocket is where. But I'm going to look real close first, though. Because now I've lost my front and back. <laughs> right there. Okay. So our first one is a top load. And I'm not going to do a very deep um, cut in that. She had a punch board, and she used it. I guess I'm not going to cut that at all. My punch won't cut that, that thick. Well, that's fine. I don't care if it's punched anyway. Um... So, we need to put our top two on there, but first you need your ribbon or whatever you're going to use for closure. So, I picked this one because I've got a lot of gold going on with this, but what I love about this one is it is stretchy. So, if I were a little short for some reason on my, um, on this side, which I'm not, but if I were, then that stretchy would allow me to go ahead and use that steel as my closure. So that's what I love about the stretchy. When she did it, she just did a little piece and glued it here and let it hold out. I just like it wrapped around because I feel like that's going to be a really secure thing. Um, will it be a problem with my paper? I don't think so because my paper is thick. If my paper were really thin I was trying to put on there, then I wouldn't be able to do that. I would be stitching close to the edge. Not too close, but close enough. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac since this is a cloth item. And I'm going to put it directly across where I think the center is. You eyeball yours or measure your choice. Okay, so that's going to be my front. Now, I'm not gluing the spine. I don't want that glued. Um, you can if you want to, but it's going to be hidden anyway, so you won't even see that. So I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to try and eyeball and make sure that I get these the same place. So you want them coming out the same spot. So we'll do that there. And I'm going to glue from, I'm going to start over here so I can see where that one is, where it should end, and go to where it's coming out at. Alright, and there we're going to be just right. Now we can take our pieces that we cut and glue them down. I am going to go ahead and use Fabri-Tac just because of that middle section. You can use Art Glitter Glue would work fine. I wouldn't use glue stick for this step um, just because it's more likely not to hold that much of it. Being a fabric, you know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean. Okay, so this is our one we're going to put on the front here. We're going to eyeball getting it centered. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to smush it down and hold it till it sets a minute. There we go. I'm going to flip it over. And, oh, that was our back. This is our front. That's fine. That's fine. I think we'll do it like that. I used the same one on the front and the back. Um, just so that I had some cohesion there. But you do you. Okay. And we said we we're going to do it like this. 
I've got glue all on my fingers, so I'm trying not to get it on there too. And there we go. We're going to hold that down for a second. Okay. So at this point, you're good to go through and decorate and put you in some little tags. Um, everything goes through there really nicely. So you're, you're good for all your pockets to put something in them and to decorate your front and your back. And I have these little quilt labels. It says, with love in every thread. I thought we might use one of those somewhere in it, on it. If I can get it open. I've had these for years. Oh, it must have a sticky back. Well, that's cool. So if we use that on the front, maybe. I also have these two things that I thought were really fun. I have this package of... Um, needles from way back. My friend Miss Kathy Cal sent that to me. I also have this um, seam, um, seam binding. It's not seam binding, it's the uh, um, that outside edge. You know what I'm talking about. It's that stuff. I thought, I don't know if I would want to put that on the top and the bottom and then have these like in the middle. I don't think this is really going to go real good with that. And I'm probably pushing it with this. So I might not use either one of those because the colors just don't seem right. But I do like the needles. And I've got all these little buttons and doodads we can put on. Look at these cute little shoes. That would be a fun little doodad on the end of our, our little spot here. Yeah, that could be fun. And... Uh, I've got those little buttons. I don't think those are work, but I do have some little cameos. Those might would even be cuter or cute with it. Maybe cute with it. I don't know. I can actually cut that back off because I think they're plastic there. And we could put a boot there and a heart, not a heart, but a, you know, this diamondy thing there. And then we could work with the cameo and we could add some little something. I don't know. I don't know. I will go ahead and continue fussing with mine and get it all fixed up. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you've learned something and can use this. I hope I have not totally confused you in it. If I have, forgive me, I will link the original video that I saw in the description box and you're more than welcome to go and check it out with her too. So you guys, th hey guys, jumping in here real quick, I forgot one last step and I told y'all we were going to cover this binding part, but I never did it. So let's work on that. I've got this little piece of suede leather. I guess it, it's not really suede, it's just really, really soft. The inside feels like the suede stuff, but I want to make sure that my front and my back are even, but I also want to make sure that it's not too long. So I'm going to cut it right about there. I put everything away, all my scissors and everything. So we're going to go straight across and it may be a little bit long steel, but that's okay because I want to have it longer than shorter so I'm just trying to straighten up these little edges and it, you kind of hold your breath when you're straightening leather edges up you, actually you know what you can do it with your rotary cutter hang on okay so what I'm gonna do to make sure I get this exactly in half is I'm gonna flip it together like this and I have my handy dandy disappearing ink from sewing stuff. Uh, if you have a fusion pen, they will um, iron away. So you could use that, but nobody's going to see this. So you could really use anything. The inside that is. Okay, so we need to glue the middle part first. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. 
you know what, before I do that, let me go and stitch around the outside edge. I think that would be really cute. Hang on. Okay, I've stitched all the way around and checked my line and I'm going to put it together with that in the center. Making sure that it covers top and bottom and that nothing is uneven. You really don't even have to glue it to the spine, just to the sides actually, but I guess I'm gluing it to all of it. <laughs> Okay, so let me pull that around and it's glued there and I'll glue the back and that will be the end of our tutorial. I can't believe I almost forgot to give you that piece. All right. There we go. Okay, guys. She just has to dry and she will be all done. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.